Hi, this is Kim Hammer, pastor of Slim Baptist Church Community Tall Outside Benton with your daily devotion taken from the book of Numbers chapter 21. In this chapter we find this is where the venomous snakes are sent among the Israelites to punish them for their rebellion and rejection of God's word as he was trying to pass it through Moses to them to get them to turn from their own ways. We find when we look at the history of snakes as defined in the Bible uh, that the snakes have been, never been looked upon favorably because what happened in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14 where Satan took on the form of the serpent and used that situation to deceive Eve and as a result sin entered into the human race and ever since man has had to deal with sin in the human race. And the salvation to that is through Jesus Christ who was lifted up on the cross of Calvary. And we'll find that as we look at the events of Numbers chapter 21 they actually complement with regards to Christ being lifted up on the cross of Calvary. Christ even used the brood of vipers as a description of the false teachers in the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 7 uh, to give an idea of the distaste that he had for those that would go about teaching falsely the word of God. When you take a look at when the snakes began to go in among the Israelites, what it brought about was confession of their sin. For they cried out to Moses and said, We have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. And so we find that God used this as a form of punishment to bring the Israelites back to where they would not be rebellious and rejecting what God was trying to do through correcting them. When you think about how sometimes, and maybe use this analogy, God sometimes has to send things into our life or allow things to come into our life whenever it is that we are rebellious and whenever it is that we are rejecting his correction. And just like he used the vipers in that day in order to get the attention of the Israelites, God sometimes will use things in our life in order to get our attention. And that's not what God wants to do. It was not God's pleasure to send the snakes among the Israelites, but God loved them enough, like the Bible says, those whom the Lord love, he disciplines. And so God was disciplining them in order to get them to see the misdirection that they were going, and God will do the same thing today. Moses prayed for the people, just like Jesus prayed for the people when he was on the cross. And we find more and more that Moses is taking on the image of Christ as he matures in his spiritual relationship with God. And while Moses was not Christ, he possessed many Christ-like qualities. And we see that when the people began to confess that they had sinned against God and against Moses and they were ready to repent, Moses intervened on behalf of the people and prayed to God, and God gave him instructions. But before we look at those instructions, I want you to think about when Jesus was hanging on the cross. When he was hanging on the cross, one of the things that Jesus did is he prayed for those who put him on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In their hatred, in their bitterness, in their rebellion, in the rejection of God's word, they had sold themselves out to Satan, just like Eve sold herself out to Satan. And as a result of it, God felt compelled to allow Christ to die on the cross of Calvary to pay for their sins and to pay for ours. But even as that was occurring, Christ kept his spiritual composure enough that he was willing to pray, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, the significance of the snake being on the pole, the one thing we find is that God instructed Moses to make the snake that was supposed to go on the pole. He didn't use one of the snakes that was already there. He created an image of a snake, and he put it on the pole. And some question as to why it is that God would take the image of that snake and put it on the pole. And I think there's some comparisons that we can draw between the snake that was on the pole and the cross that Jesus hung on. For one thing, and this is what I would say is a comparison piece. Sometimes you'll get cards in the mail, especially during political season, wherever you see that two candidates are uh, comparing their records against each other. That's called a comparison piece. Or sometimes you'll see businesses that'll send something out and they will compare themselves to another business or to the industry in order to prove themselves. In similar fashion, I think the snake being lifted up on the pole was a reminder to the nation of Israel that because of their disobedience that they had to look in faith to something greater. And we find that as Christ was lifted up on the cross, we have to in faith look at the cross and what Christ did for us in order for us to be saved. But in the form of a comparison piece, you find that the snake that was raised up on the pole signified death, but Christ being raised up on the cross signified life. And as the snake was lifted up on the pole, Christ was lifted up on the cross. And as the people had to look at the snake and be, in order to be spared from death by the snake bite, people have to look up to the cross to Jesus in order to be spared the second death, which is a spiritual death where individuals spend an eternity in hell because they've rejected Christ. 
Now, the one thing I want to make sure is understood that the snake on the pole was not the focus of attention. The focus of attention was that the people were obedient to God when he said to Moses, tell them that if they will look at the pole, if they will look at the snake, they will be saved by their faith. By similar fashion, when we look at Christ on the cross, we don't worship the cross, but we worship the Christ because Christ is the one who saves us. And the way that we are saved is by putting our faith in Jesus Christ for what he did for us on the cross. Otherwise, we'd be just as dead as the snake is on the pole, but we're made alive through what Christ did on the cross. We find that when you take a look at chapter 3 and verse 15 of the book of Genesis, it says, I will put enmity, which is hatred, between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. That goes back to what I was saying a while ago. That's why people have such a strong dislike for snakes because that was part of the curse given in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. But he goes on and says that he, that is Christ, shall bruise your head, and he, that is Satan, shall bruise his heel. We know that when Christ was on the cross, that he died on the cross. That was Christ striking at the heel of Christ. He could not, he could not kill him, but he could wound him. But three days later, God resurrected him from the dead. dead. And when he did that, that's when Christ put the blow to the head of Satan and killed him for all of eternity. And that's why we worship Jesus Christ. Now, there's a passage of scripture that help ties all this together. And it's in the book of John chapter three and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. And so as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness and people found their salvation in faith by looking to God, who they were looking up to, so we find our salvation in God when we look up to Christ who died to pay for our sin debt. So we find that the connection between the events of Numbers chapter 21 and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ are connected in the fact that Christ was lifted up on the cross. Some people look up and live, and they did in that moment whenever the snakes went among the Israelites. Some looked up and lived, and those who did not look up in faith died, and so it is today. Those who don't look to Christ for salvation die for an eternity in hell. Those who do look up to Christ are saved for an eternity in heaven. When it comes to what happened to the snake in the pole, you wonder where it went after all this was said and done. If you go to 2 Kings chapter 18, 1 through 4, 2 Kings chapter 18, 1 through 4, it shows us that the people began to worship the pole they began to worship the snake and they were and it was destroyed in second kings chapter 18 1 through 4 that's why we don't worship the cross but we worship the savior who died on the cross and through him and putting our faith in him we have the gift of eternal life hope you got a blessing today and the music in the background was extra have a great day